welcome to lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering course. We are in module 3 this module is on the compressibility and consolidation and lecture 3 of module 3. So in the previous lectures we have discussed about how the loads which are actually applied on the surface can cause stresses and then so called displacements. Now in this lecture we are going to look into how these stresses can cause settlements particularly for fine grained soils like clay soils. So in this connection we will try to look into the, the concepts of consolidation and Terzaghi's one dimensional consolidation theory and application in different boundary conditions. Subsequently we will discuss about the ramp loading and how we can actually determine the consolidation characteristics of a soil and then that is coefficient of consolidation there are two methods are there and then how we can distinguish between normally consolidated and over consolidated soils and then we look into the several aspects like compression curves and secondary consolidation in the subsequent lectures. So in this lecture we are going to discuss about the Terzaghi's one dimensional consolidation theory. So consolidation basically when the materials are loaded or stressed they deform or strain. So that we have actually seen in the previous lectures when the materials are loaded the stresses are actually subjected and transferred to the ground and response of the under load is instantaneous for sandy soils for certain soils like granular soils or sandy soils where the permeability is very high the response under the load is very high but fine grained soils like clay soils require a relatively long time for undergoing deformations. So we have to uh, you know uh, demarcate here the response under the load is instantaneous for sandy soils and clay soils require a relatively long time for undergoing deformations. So when the soil is loaded it will compress because of uh, the following reasons one is the deformation of the soil grains uh, and uh, compression of air and water in the voids. So that means that the air which is actually uh, within the voids and water within the voids will get uh, compressed and the squeezing out of water and air from the voids. So because of the deformation of soil grains and compression of air and water in the voids and squeezing out of water and air from the voids is one of the causes for the uh, these, uh, these are the causes for the uh, you know the soil why the soil undergoes uh, compression. <coughs> so according to Terzaghi 1943 uh, he defined consolidation as a decrease of water content of a saturated soil without replacement of the water by air it is called the process of consolidation. So the expulsion of water from a saturated soil upon loading and without a replacement of the water by air is called the process of consolidation. So when a saturated soil or you know which have low coefficient of permeability are subjected to compressive stresses due to foundation loading or due to any structure loading the pore water pressures will immediately increase then it takes some time for the pore water pressure to dissipate. So the because of the low permeability of the soil there will be a time lag between the application of the load and uh, the expulsion of uh, pore water and uh, thus the settlement. So this phenomenon is also called as consolidation. So because of the uh, low permeability of the soil particularly a fine grained soil like clay soil there will be a time lag between the application of the load and uh, the, uh, the expulsion of the pore water and thus the settlement. So this uh, phenomenon is called consolidation. So the total vertical deformation at the surface resulting from the load is called settlement. So we have to understand when the uh, when in this case particularly the total vertical deformation at the surface resulting from the application of the load is called settlement. So that means that if you have got a footing then the footing of particular nature it undergoes settlement. So the movement uh, may be downward with an increase in load or upward with a decrease in the load. So sometimes you know when on the you know the 
uh, when the when the load is actually decreasing there can be a possibility that uh, uh, the uh, swelling or heaving can take place. So the downward movement is actually called as settlement the total vertical deformation of the surface resulting from the load is called settlement. So the temporary construction excavations and permanent excavations will cause a reduction in stress and uh, the swelling may result and lowering of the water table will lead to settlements due to increase in the effective stress within the soil. So uh, lowering of the water table uh, will also lead to settlements because of the increase in the effective stress within the soil. So the here in this slide what we are trying to determine is the settlement the total vertical deformation at the surface resulting from the uh, load is called settlement and the movement may be downward with an increase in uh, load or upward uh, with a decrease in the load. So if you have got temporary construction excavations or permanent excavations they because of the removal of the material will cause a reduction in the stress and the swelling may result. The lowering of the water table will lead to settlements that is due to an increase in the effective stress within the soil. So in the design of foundations for engineering structures it is required to know how much settlement will occur and how fast it will occur. So for any soil deposit when we are actually trying to construct a structure uh, for a uh, in designing foundation we have to calculate what are the likelihood of settlements and how fast they will occur. So excessive settlement may cause the structural as well as other damages especially if such settlement occurs rapidly. So excessive settlements uh, may cause structural as well as other damages especially if such settlements occur rapidly. So the total settlement ST uh, uh, S suffix T uh, of a loaded area has three components. So if you look into that ST is uh, you know the is divided broadly into three this thing ST is nothing but S, SI plus SC plus SS and SI is nothing but the immediate or distortion settlement and we also call it as elastic settlement uh, that is the readjustment of the particle or raveling of the particles with that the immediate uh, or distortion settlement will be there. And uh, SC is nothing but the consolidation settlement which is uh, known also known as the time dependent settlement and uh, SS is called the secondary consolidation or secondary compression settlement and this is also time dependent this is also time dependent but this occurs at the end of the process of uh, consolidation uh, under the constant effective stress. So that is uh, nothing but the creeping of soil particles will occur and the void ratio will uh, continue to change. Uh, you know uh, under the constant effective stress. So this is evident for uh, some examples like uh, municipal solid waste which is a man made uh, uh, you know the uh, solid uh, waste material uh, which will undergo uh, you know very large uh, secondary consolidation uh, settlements because of the uh, uh, its own characteristics uh, because of the heterogeneous uh, mixture of the uh, you know matrix. Uh, as well as the ongoing biodecomposition which actually takes place because of the uh, you know the biochemical uh, changes which are actually happening uh, in the municipal solid waste with time. Another example is the PT type of soils uh, because of the fibrous nature they undergo uh, this uh, secondary consolidation very high. So that is the reason why the marshy lands uh, you know particularly the construction marshy lands they are very highly prone for uh, secondary consolidation settlements. So the total settlement is actually divided into SI plus SC plus SS. So the immediate or elastic or distortion settlement is SI then SC is nothing but the consolidation settlement which is a time dependent and SS is nothing but the secondary consolidation this is also a time dependent settlement. Now let us look into if a volume of a soil changes the effective stress must change since the soil grains and water are assumed to be incompressible the volume of saturated soil can only change as the water is squeezed from or drawn into the pore space. So since the soil grains and water are assumed to be incompressible the volume of a saturated soil can only change as the water is squeezed from or drawn into the pore space. So as the water flows from the innermost pores towards its boundaries flow will be governed by Darcy's law but since the rate of flow must be finite the soil wall will be volume will change with time. So consequently the effective stress must change with time uh, so will be the hydraulic gradient and rate of flow. So if you look into this uh, the variation of soil volume is a function of uh, effective and total stresses and uh, pore water pressure 
and seepage and compressibility uh, nature of the soil. So the seepage and compressibility of the soils. So variation in soil volume is a function of effective and total stresses, the pore water pressure as seepage and compressibility. So if the volume of the soil changes the effective stress must change that is uh, uh, if suppose if the water is uh, expelling out of uh, soil then there will be a reduction in volume then the effective stress uh, you know will have to change. Since the soil grains and water are assumed to be incompressible the volume of a soil saturated soil can only be changed as the water is squeezed from or drawn into the pore space. So as the water flows from the innermost pores towards its boundaries the flow will be governed by Darcy's law but since the rate of flow must be finite the, vol the soil volume will change with time. So the time dependent process of volume change in soil as the water is squeezed from the pores is known as consolidation. So this is also another uh, 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 you know definition which we look into it. Uh, the time dependent process of volume change in soil as the water is squeezed from the pores is known as consolidation. During consolidation process uh, the transient flow of water from the from and through the soil material occurs. So during the consolidation process this process is also called a transient because uh, the pore water pressure keeps on changing with time. So the seepage uh, forces experienced by the soil structure will vary with time and the soil structure itself may deform under the uh, varying load it sustains. So during the consolidation process and this consolidation phenomenon is also called a transient uh, flow phenomenon uh, where the transient flow of water from, uh, from and through the soil material occurs. The seepage forces experienced by the soil structure will vary with time and uh, uh, the soil structure itself may deform under the varying uh, load it sustains. So the relationship between the volume of the soil and the effective stress and which is uh, the relationship independent of time is known as uh, compression. That means that uh, the, the relationship between uh, change in volume of soil and nothing but the change in volume of the soil is nothing but change in void ratio because uh, if you assume that uh, the area is A then in that case uh, you know uh, the effective uh, that was is a change in void ratio and the effective stress if that is a which is the relationship independent of time and this is basically uh, known as compression. So uh, compression is uh, nothing but a relationship between the volume of the soil and uh, the effective stress and which is a relationship independent of time is known as compression. And the time dependent process of volume change in soil as water is squeezed from the pores is known as consolidation and uh, during the consolidation process the transient flow of water from, from and through the soil material occurs and because of this what will happen is that the seepage forces experienced by the soil structure will vary with time and the soil structure itself deforms under varying load it sustains. So if you compare clay versus sand we said that clay is one material where the you know the fine grain nature and the permeability is very low and the sand where the an example part of you know a coarse grain material where uh, with the 0 percent fines let us say and the compressibility if you look into that uh, is medium to very low and uh, it is less than few centimeters per sands. In case of clays is actually medium to very high up to 1 meter. So the settlements actually can go the compressibility can actually uh, go up to 1 meter to 1.5 meter in a certain type of soft clays and permeability is high and the drainage happens during the construction. In case of sands permeability is very high and the drainage actually happens during the construction. In case of clays very low and nearly undrained during construction that means that in case of clays the permeability is very low and nearly undrained during construction. And if you look into the, the stress strain behavior for the sands and clays essentially the same basic principles are applied. So, uh, we have to uh, note here that uh, the sands actually have got high permeability and drainage actually happens during construction and clays actually have very low permeability and they behave uh, like nearly undrained during construction and uh, the compressibility can be very high up to 1 to 1.5 meters for certain type of clays and uh, the it is actually rated as medium to very high for clays and for sands medium to very low and sometimes is less than few centimeters compressibility for sands. 
So in this particular slide if you look into this the time versus compression of a sand is given and you can see that when the within fraction of few seconds then you can see that the sand actually has undergone 80 percent of compression. So that means that the settlement of the granular take uh, granular soils taken place uh, take place very very instantaneously. So consider a case uh, where uh, uh, if you consider the case where the granular materials are one dimensionally compressed the deformation uh, takes place in a very short time due to the relatively high permeability of granular soils. The compression of sand occurs during the construction stage itself. So the compression of the sand occurs uh, during construction stage itself. As settlements of granular layers occurs relatively fast, uh, they may be determinantal to a structure when uh, sensitive to, to rapid settlements. Suppose if a structure is actually sensitive to rapid settlements, uh, then the settlement of a granular soil can be determinantal in affecting the structure behavior. So, uh, compressibility of the sands, if you look into the deformation, takes place in a very short time due to the relatively high permeability of granular soils and the resistance is more more of frictional in nature and the compressible compression of the sand occurs during the construction stage itself. Now let us look into this particular behavior of the soil compression and consolidation model. So here we have got two you know graphs which are actually plotted in this slide where the upper one is actually versus time versus the stress and the bottom one is that time versus volume and V0 is the initial volume of the soil and this is the this is divided into four stages that is stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and stage 4 and this particular stage where the general hydrostatic water table is there that is the total stress is equal to sigma naught dash effective stress plus hydrostatic water pressure that is U0. So in this particular stage at time uh, you know the change in volume is uh, 0 and uh, the settlement is 0 the change in volume is 0 and uh, the total stress is equal to sigma naught dash plus uh, u naught where u naught is the hydrostatic pressure because of the prevalent ground water table in a at a given depth. Now when uh, at time uh, uh, t is equal to 0 in stage 2 uh, let us assume that uh, uh, this is the initial effective stress that is sigma naught dash and the, uh, the, the soil surface is have been subjected to an increase in load which is actually called as delta u uh, uh, say delta sigma. The delta sigma is the incremental stress which actually has been applied uh, and uh, when the, once this is applied uh, the immediately at time t is equal to 0 the water in the water within the voids. Uh, will be subjected to the pressure equivalent to that of the intensity of the pressure which has been applied on the surface of the soil. So that is nothing but uh, becomes delta sigma becomes delta u. So that is the reason why at that particular moment at time t is equal to 0 the pore water pressure is u0 plus delta u and effective stress is sigma0 dash. So in this stage also no volume change occurs no settlement occurs uh, and uh, the effective stress is sigma0 dash but the pore water pressure is uh, u naught plus delta u. Now uh, in the stage 3 where the commencement of the dissipation of pore water pressure takes place that is that you know once that uh, uh, the delta u starts uh, decreasing uh, that means that the soil grain starts uh, you know supporting the or attracting the load. In such situation uh, this actually uh, can be uh, you know uh, at that particular point if you can see that. Uh, yeah, this uh, the so called uh, sigma naught dash plus delta sigma t is the stress already uh, you know delta sigma t uh, dash is actually the st uh, stress which is already transferred to the grains and uh, this portion of the uh, pore water pressure is yet to be uh, dissipated uh, and uh, wherein you have the delta u t is actually yet to be dissipated. Then further when you go further then it reaches to the so called uh, u, u naught plus delta u. Uh, tends to become to u naught that means that this is the portion this is the time when t infinity where the the process of the consolidation takes place. So in this uh, circumstances what will happen is that uh, the total uh, uh, the effective stress now changes to sigma naught dash to delta sigma that means that once the uh, pore water pressure uh, you know uh, raises and dissipates uh, over this uh, particular uh, 
uh, in this pattern and during this particular uh, time lag there is a volume change will occur that means that volume change is nothing but the settlement and uh, you know that this process actually is uh, you know told uh, can be said as the uh, you know the consolidation the consolidation process. So at the end of the consolidation process sigma naught dash plus uh, delta sigma is the, the new effective stress and uh, the u naught is the you know original hydrostatic more or less uh, the water table remain if the water table remain constant then it is uh, the uh, original hydrostatic pressure conditions are maintained. So with this in this way uh, what we are saying is that uh, if you have a soil deposit and if it is subjected to a certain time of loading and it takes for a period of time to you know the transfer the load to the effective stresses and uh, you know the effective stresses tries to pick up that load and then uh, you know gain to or reach to that particular sigma naught dash to delta sigma at the end of the process of consolidation. Now this also can be explained uh, you know by considering a spring analogy model. Let us assume that we are having a, a rigid container uh, in which uh, a spring which is actually placed and uh, the container is actually filled with water and we have a piston which is actually connected to the uh, spring and uh, the piston actually has a hole and which actually represents the, the rate at which water flows out of the soil that is nothing but the permeability of the soil and uh, initially you assume that uh, the uh, you know we have uh, the piston and the spring and uh, the the container is uh, within the uh, the portion within the uh, con container below the piston is filled with water and no stress is applied no delta sigma is applied in that case the total stress is equal to uh, if uh, due to uh, the sigma naught dash is equal to if a, total, if a total stress is actually equivalent to that is applied then sigma naught dash is equal to sigma naught dash plus u naught and uh, where in here um, uh, where in here uh, the the soil grains actually uh, they are represented by the spring and water as uh, wa the, the water in the cylinder as the pore water. Now moment to the delta sigma is actually applied then you know the pore water pressure uh, the water is within the, within the cylinder rises to uh, delta u and moment once the uh, you know the drainage conditions commences that is in stage 3. Uh, then you know the slowly the spring starts undergoing compression that indicates that the rise in the effective stresses here uh, you know are nothing but the indication of this compression of the spring uh, wherein uh, the sigma naught dash uh, continues to increase and reaches to sigma naught dash plus delta sigma. So uh, you know this particular moment uh, uh, you know the final hydrostatic conditions are actually reached then you know these uh, the original hydrostatic equilibrium conditions are maintained and then you know the uh, the spring is now compressed to such an extent that it is the stress is now sigma naught dash plus delta sigma and u naught is the you know the hydrostatic uh, or uh, hydrostatic pore water pressure. So this uh, model explains the soil compression and consolidation uh, uh, behavior uh, you know. Uh, so this is uh, you know this uh, what actually is the process of consolidation uh, explains the process of consolidation. The process of consolidation is actually explained here if you are having uh, a spring uh, uh, which is uh, loaded uh, the piston which is loaded with sigma naught dash with delta sigma and uh, the valve when it is actually closed then uh, the water pressure which is nothing but sigma naught dash with delta u that means that initially the delta u is 0 here and moment uh, the water pressure the, the load is actually delta sigma is applied the delta u plus delta sigma is actually is borne by the water. Now what will happen is that once this uh, valve is opened then this yellow portion starts uh, you know covering the blue portion that means that that is uh, nothing but sigma naught dash with delta sigma t at any time uh, if this uh, happens then what will happen is that this is the portion which is actually transfer to the soil grain and this portion is at to be dissipated moment this reaches to this level uh, this uh, this uh, point then it is called as uh, the uh, the so called uh, uh, the completion of consolidation and that is called sigma naught dash plus delta sigma. So in this case if you look into this the variation of the pore water pressure with time and with depth is actually uh, also called as uh, the isochrone. So the moment at time t is equal to 0 when instantaneously when the pressure is actually applied and this is actually called as the uh, you know the first iso isochrone and moment uh, you know the you know as the uh, 
you know the uh, dissipation of the pore water pressure that is the as the water is actually leaking out of the cylinder then there is a possibility that uh, the isochrones actually migrate towards this and this is the called as the final uh, isochrone. So this is at a time t and this is the isochrone at this particular time and this is at time t infinity that is at the end of the consolidation and this is the, uh, the final isochrone. So uh, the isochrones are nothing but uh, you know identical uh, pore water pressures at, with, uh, at a, uh, part a, part a, part a particular time. So uh, uh, identical pore water pressures uh, at for identical times. So if we are having uh, you know that is for single uh, a small clay layer where we have spring analogy but the same spring analogy can be extended if you are having a, a clay layer which is uh, you know have got uh, uh, doubly open layers both the top and bottom and the clay layer is actually saturated and a clay which is actually having a thickness uh, 2H and uh, if this is uh, this so this, this clay is actually completely saturated and where we have got uh, uh, you know the upper layer and bottom layer are, are uh, and uh, you know the uh, open layers or also called as uh, you know the drainage layers. So this is actually is uh, indicated by a spring analogy with multiple springs connected in a series wherein uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, these springs are actually placed like this and then each and every compartment is connected and the upper and bottom suppose let us say that both the layers are uh, you know sand layers then the both the layer, both the walls are actually open simultaneously uh, or if the one layer let us say that uh, if you are having a rock layer at the interface uh, the in, uh, impervious layer at the base then this uh, wall will be kept as uh, close then you know the water will have to escape through uh, you know this particular uh, uh, upper wall only. So if we are actually having if these walls are actually you know let us assume that uh, opened simultaneously uh, simulating the uh, double open layer double drainage condition then in that case what will happen is that first the spring 1 and 5 will undergo compression then subsequently spring 2 and 4 will undergo compression and finally the, the, the last spring to undergo compression is 3 that means that the springs which are actually close to the uh, you know the wall they actually attract the uh, you know the effective stress uh, uh, you know very rapidly and followed by the, the springs which are actually farther away from the uh, away from the, uh, the drainage phase. So this uh, is uh, you know indicates say for example uh, this particular uh, uh, is indicated by a pressure variation with the depth. So this is the initial effective stress variation. Uh, in case of uh, spring analogy it can be indicated like a, a uniform pressure but uh, for convenience for the for the clay layer this is indicated with uh, a certain uh, surcharge and then this is the effective stress. If this is the effective stress uh, then what will happen is that at time t is equal to 0 when it is subjected to an increase in load due to some delta sigma then uh, the water pressure that means that this is the it will uh, it will happen that the first isochrone will develop here. And uh, then if you notice here at time t greater than t is equal to 0 that means t1, t2, t3 when it actually happens then what will happen is that immediately the pressure at the drainage phases actually drops down to uh, 0 and uh, that means that the soil which is actually close to the clay soil which is actually close to the drainage phase um, is the first one to uh, you know transfer the stresses uh, attract the stresses and the, the soil the water transfers the stresses to the soil uh, rapidly and uh, you know the effective stress here uh, is nothing but delta sigma and here also it is delta sigma. But when it comes to a central point here and you can see that, uh, that uh, the, the uh, being at the mid depth of the clay layer uh, and uh, also the you know the uh, you know that uh, the hydraulic gradient which is actually there at the center is very very low and also is a delta u by delta h is actually 0. So because of that what will happen is that the flow is virtually 0. But in the case when you look into this, this particular posture that delta u variation with the you know delta z the, the hydraulic gradient is actually infinity here. So because of the you know because of this you know sharp hydraulic gradient changes the rapid flow actually happens in the drainage phases and the transfer of the effective stresses becomes very very you know rapid at the boundaries of the 
uh, boundaries of the clay layer. You say in case if uh, the clay layer is having uh, let us say that uh, off closed layer that is at the rock layer is at the base that means that you know this peak will be at this uh, center that means that approximately uh, the, the, the this will become the uh, you know the drainage path the water tries to flow and then uh, you know the water pressure escapes only in this direction provided if you are having only one dimensional consolidation. So this is uh, you know the first isochron uh, at time t is equal to 0 that is t is equal to 0 t is equal to t0 is the time at the moment the application of the load has been applied. But once t1, t2, t3 times are there this is the isochrone and t2 is greater than t1, t3 is greater than t4 then this is for t infinity. So what will happen is that uh, this if you look into this at this particular depth this is the sigma dash z plus delta sigma t dash. So this much portion of the effective stress is already transferred to the soil but at this portion here you can see that the soil is still uh, having the effective stress which is actually at sigma, uh, sigma naught dash whatever the initial effective stress is there and that is still uh, prevails at the uh, center. So uh, uh, here when you look into this here. Uh, the the migration the movement of the isochrones actually happens here ultimately and this process this is actually the time which is required for the uh, the dissipation of the pore water pressure is also called as the time lag and which is uh, you know depend upon the the permeability of the soil so at the mid depth the decrease in excess pore water pressure is small compared to the change in change at the top and bottom so as a result uh, what we are trying to explain is that it takes a long time from the center of a doubly drained layer uh, or at the bottom of a single drain layer to dissipate the excess pore water pressure and the slope of isochrones at uh, mid depth is uh, almost like uh, delta u by delta z is equal to 0 and no flow condition actually occurs at z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 2 h that is at the both top and bottom uh, the delta u by delta z is infinite and the flow is largest right at the drainage phases. So because of the because the flow is actually largest at the right at the drainage phases uh, that means that because of that there is a possibility that uh, you know the uh, you know the, the soil uh, undergoes so you can say that consolidation very very rapidly at the uh, boundaries. So the Terzaghi's one dimensional consolidation theory the uh, basically the assumptions which are actually involved the clay is homogeneous and 100% saturated and the drainage is provided at both the top and bottom of the clay layer and the Darcy's law is valid and this is what which has been assumed but uh, afterwards uh, the, the theory can be derived for different boundary conditions and the Darcy's law is assumed to be valid and the soil grains and water are assumed to be incompressible and compression and flow are one dimensional that means that here in this case one dimensional uh, is assumed but uh, in the latter part of this lectures we will be also discussing the three dimensional that is uh, uh, this one dimensional as well as the two dimensional flow if that actually happens uh, there is a possibility that the consolidation can be uh, accelerated and the deformation of the soil occurs uh, in the direction of the load application. So here the deformation of the soil occurs in the direction of load application and the unique relationship between delta E and delta sigma. So here uh, during the process of consolidation that is the during the process of consolidation there is a, there is a, there exists an unique relationship between delta E and delta sigma. So the deformation of the soil occurs in the direction of the load application and the compression and flow are uh, one dimensional nature and the soil grains or water are incompressible and Darcy's law is valid. So here uh, the relationship between delta E and delta sigma are given so where uh, the value of the d e by d sigma the d sigma dash that is the change in effective stress and change in void ratio. So initially if you are having a void ratio say E naught and uh, at the sigma naught dash moment the delta sigma is applied the sigma 1 dash is now uh, nothing but sigma naught dash plus delta sigma. So, uh, the, so because of the inc uh, increase in effective stress in soil the, there is a reduction in the void ratio from E0 to E1. So E1 minus uh, uh, the, the E0 minus E1 that is nothing but the DE or delta E. So the value of uh, DE by D sigma dash is constant over L2 range of effective stresses and the permeability K is also assumed to be constant over the L2 range of effective stresses and the time lag in consolidation is entirely uh, due to the low permeability of the soil the time lag in the consolidation uh, is entirely due to the uh, low permeability of the soil. 
uh, Terzeghi's one dimensional consolidation theory is essentially a small strain theory that is the applied load increment produces only small strains in the soil and therefore both the coefficient of compressibility AV and K remain essentially constant during the consolidation process. So the applied load increment uh, produces only small strains in the soil and therefore the both the coefficient of compress, uh, compressibility that is uh, AV which is nothing but uh, delta E by delta sigma dash. Uh, which is actually shown in the previous slide where AV is equal to delta E by delta sigma the slope of this line is uh, defined as uh, coefficient of compressibility which is nothing but delta E by delta sigma dash um, uh, and K the coefficient of compressibility AV and K remain essentially constant during the consolidation process and the constant AV implies that there is no secondary compression if the secondary compression occurs. Uh, that the relationship between delta E and delta sigma dash would not be unique. So secondary compression as we defined earlier it is uh, the change in void ratio that occurs at constant effective stress. So the Terzeghi's one dimensional consolidation theory essentially is a small strain theory and uh, this uh, means that the applied uh, load increment produces only small strains in the soil and uh, therefore the coefficient of permeability and coefficient of compressibility remain constant during the consolidation process and constant uh, constant of compressibility means that there is no secondary compression during the process of consolidation which we what we call is the primary uh, consolidation if the secondary consolidation or secondary compression occurs then the relationship between delta E and delta sigma dash, sigma dash would not be unique. So now uh, we will try to derive uh, the so called uh, the Terzeghi's one dimensional consolidation equation uh, when the now consider when the clay is subjected to an increase in vertical pressure delta sigma and the pore water pressure at any point A will increase by U. So consider uh, a, a soil strata uh, where uh, here uh, you know for example the delta sigma is equal to 10 kilo Pascals has been shown here but assume that you have got a clay and uh, the water table is at this point and it is doubly drained and the clay layer is the portion which is in between sandwiched between two sand layers and on the top on the ground surface there is a delta sigma which actually has been applied. Now a consider a small element having volume dx dy dz and the z is this direction so x and y directions are z is this direction and the plane perpendicular to this z direction is the x and y. So in this x and y direction uh, the flow actually happens that means that uh, the water enters the element and water leaves out of the element. So uh, the water enters into the element is actually nothing but Q is equal to AV continuity equation wherein uh, Q in is equal to uh, dx dy, dx dy is nothing but the element area into Vz and Q out is nothing but uh, that Vz plus dou Vz by dou Z into dz into dx dy that is the. Uh, the because of the, uh, the pore water pressure uh, change. <coughs> so, in consider we have we have uh, what we are discussing is that consider a small element uh, having a volume of dx dy dz at a. So, v is equal to dx dy dz at the z point a. So, in case of one dimensional consolidation, the flow of water into and out of the soil element is one dimensional only. Uh, that is in the z direction. So in that case qx is equal to qy is equal to change in uh, flow in x and y direction also 0 because um, this one dimensional uh, consolidation is uh, valid if you are having a soil deposit where it has been subjected to large area loadings. The area loading is such that it is uh, assumed that it is uh, uh, you know to the for the convenience assume that it is instantaneous in nature and it is extending uh, large area extent. In that case what will happen is that the one dimensional consolidation only predominantly takes place. If you are having a, a, a finite uh, area which is actually loaded there is a possibility that the three dimensional uh, uh, flow in, in, in uh, y direction x direction as well as the uh, you know so called uh, z direction it can happen. So but in case with the large area loadings the one dimensional consolidation is actually possible. Uh, let us assume that for this one example for the one dimensional uh, consolidation is that if you are having a soft clay when it is actually loaded with uh, this area fill which is uh, about say 1 or 2 meters extending, extending over the entire area then in that case uh, you know the area extent of the uh, area is much uh, larger than the thickness of the clay layer 
in that case what will happen is that the one dimensional consolidation only uh, uh, predominantly happens. Now here in this particular uh, slide the change in uh, flow that is outflow to inflow that is difference qz plus 2qz minus qz is given as rate of change of volume of soil element which is nothing but uh, dou v by dou t. So qz is defined as we have written we have uh, written in the next slide as uh, uh, vz into az which is nothing but kz ij into az and kz is the coefficient of the permeability in vertical direction that is z direction and ij is dou h by dou z and uh, flow is actually happening in the dx dy perpendicular to dx dy so uh, aj is equal to dx dy. Now qz plus uh, dqz is equal to kz plus ij plus dij into dx dy. Uh, so by writing kz into dou h by dou z plus dou square h by dou z square into dz into dx dy. So by taking the, uh, the subtraction uh, with uh, qz plus dou qz minus qz what we will get is that kz into dou square h by dou z square into dx dy dz. So dou v by dou t is now is nothing but dou v by dou t is nothing but by substituting and simplifying dou v by dou t is nothing but k into uh, k, k, is, k is indicated as now here kz is indicated as k dou square h by dou z square into dx dy dz. So using uh, h is equal to u by gamma w so we can write differentiate this partially dou h by dou z is equal to dou u by dou z into 1 by uh, gamma w where gamma w is the unit weight of water and uh, differentiating once again dou square h by dou z square is equal to dou square u by dou z square into 1 by gamma w. So this is uh, dou square by h by dou z square so the substituting uh, for dou square h by dou z square here it becomes so k by gamma w into dou square u by dou z square is equal to this if you bring it here it becomes 1 by dx dy dz into dv by dt. So here uh, this particular equation now turned out to be uh, k into k by uh, gamma w into dou square u by dou z square is equal to 1 by dou x uh, 1 by dx dy dz into dou v by dou t. Now uh, here during the consolidation the rate of change of volume is equal to the rate of change of the void volume. So uh, the dou v by dou t will be equal to uh, dou v v by dou t. So where VV is the volume of the voids in the soil element. So we can write VV is equal to EVS and uh, now uh, what we can do is that that particular equation uh, we can write in terms of dou V by dou T. Uh, we can write like dou V by dou T is equal to um, you know this by differentiating this we get uh, dou U by dou T VS into dou U by dou T. So for uh, dou V by dou T if you substitute VS into dou U by dou T. Uh, so further VS is rearranged as Vs is equal to V by 1 plus E and with that our E is equal to Vv by Vs with that what we can write is that V by 1 plus E we can write. So this is nothing but Vs the volume of the solids is written in terms of V by 1 plus E into dou U by dou T and this is equal to dx dy dz which is nothing but V is nothing but dx dy dz by 1 plus E into dou U by dou T. Now equating this, this equation 2 with 1 that is k by gamma w dou square by dou z square uh, with this one uh, what we get is that the dx dy dz will get uh, cancelled and what we will have is that k by gamma w into dou square u by dou z square is equal to 1 by 1 plus e into dou u by dou t. So here what we have is that by equating 1 and 2 we have got now k by gamma w into dou square u by dou z square is equal to 1 by 1 plus e into dou u by dou t. Now further what we do is that the change in void ratio dou e is due to the increase in the effective stress change in void ratio uh, that is reduction in the void ratio when it is actually happening from e0 to say, say e1 uh, the due to the increase in the effective stress or increase in the effective stress and, uh, and also uh, we have to find uh, note that the decrease in the uh, excess pore water pressure increase in the effective stress uh, which is uh, preceded by the you know the decrease in the excess pore water pressure. Uh, so assuming that there are there they are linearly related so we can say that dou E is equal to minus AV into dou dou sigma dash by uh, uh, A minus AV into uh, AV is nothing but uh, coefficient of compressibility uh, dou into dou delta sigma dash. 
So where AV is the coefficient of compressibility again the increase in the effective stress is due to the decrease of the excess pore water pressure. So we can write uh, dou E is equal to AV delta U. So by you know substituting substituting this uh, dou E by dou T is equal to AV delta U by dou uh, AV del, uh, dou U by dou T. So we can write uh, the, the, the previous uh, equation that co K by gamma W dou square U by dou Z square is equal to 1 by 1 plus E in dou U by dou T. So what we have done is that we uh, you know uh, substitute for uh, dou U by dou T is equal to AV into dou U by dou T. So K by gamma W dou square U by dou Z square is equal to AV by 1 plus E into dou U by dou T. So this AV by 1 plus E is uh, nothing but uh, defined as uh, M suffix V and that is the coefficient of volume compressibility. So coefficient of volume compressibility is a parameter and where the units of this are uh, nothing but meter square uh, per kilo Newton um, AV by 1 plus E naught. Uh, because coefficient of compressibility units are uh, meter square per kilo Newton. So this is actually followed exactly the same and dou, dou U by dou T. So uh, K by gamma W into dou, dou square U by dou Z square is equal to uh, AV by 1 plus E into dou U by dou T or which is nothing but MV is equal to dou U by dou T. So in this figure uh, you know this pressure void ratio relationship is actually explained here. Suppose P1 uh, which is nothing but sigma, sigma naught dash in our case. And if that happens delta sigma and this is sigma sigma 1 that is sigma 1 is nothing but sigma naught dash plus delta sigma this is the end of the process of consolidation. So this portion if there is an increase in the uh, pore water pressure uh, this is the pore water pressure increased uh, this is the water ratio which is actually decreased at any time t and this is the pore water increase in the effective stress and this is the pore water pressure at to be dissipated. So the using that relationship. Uh, the, the, this is what actually this explains that uh, you know the increase in effective stress is due to the decrease in the excess pore water pressure. So because of that uh, you know what we have written is that dou U is equal to AV delta U, uh, AV dou U and uh, which by writing by dou U by dou T is equal to AV by AV into dou U by dou T. So that is how we have got K by gamma W into dou square U by dou Z square is equal to AV by 1 plus E into dou U by dou T. So, uh, now further continuing uh, we can say that now the dou u by dou t is equal to k by uh, gamma w mv dou square u by dou z square. So this, uh, uh, this particular equation is uh, uh, called as dou u by dou t is equal to cv into dou square u by dou z square is the basic uh, differential equation of the Terzaghi's one dimensional consolidation theory and we can be solved with proper uh, boundary conditions. Uh, that means that we have to see whether uh, you know the pore water pressure whether it is uh, uh, having a open layer at the bottom at top and then what is the variation of the pore water pressure. So for the different, vari different variations of the pore water pressure within the soil and this can be solved. So this dou u by dou t is equal to k by gamma w m v. So if you look into this here k is equal to coefficient of permeability is related has C V gamma C V gamma W and M V. So coefficient of permeability K is equal to coefficient of permeability K is equal to C V gamma W C V gamma W M V. M V is the coefficient of volume compressibility and gamma W is the unit weight of water. And in the difference basic differential equation dou U by dou T C V is nothing but the coefficient of consolidation. The units of this coefficient of consolidation are the meters per second. So if the C V value is high that means that uh, uh, you know if you look into this here k if the k is actually high the cv value is high when the KV, k value is say low very impervious soil the cv value will low so the larger the cv value the faster is the uh, settlements can actually taking place and uh, lower is the cv value the you know that much time that much delay will actually happen in happening the settlements the CV actually indicates the you know the time rate of the rate of settlements basically uh, is a parameter that is the only parameter the soil parameter which is actually there in the Terzaghi's one dimensional consolidation equation. So the CV the coefficient of consolidation which uh, we will discuss further uh, how to determine this in the laboratory and how this is actually uh, found to be dependent on the uh, you know the effective stress where uh, uh, for the range of the loadings which actually can have be subjected in the, in the laboratory where CV is equal to K by gamma W into MV. 
So, this is the basic differential equation of the Terzaghi's one dimensional consolidation theory and uh, this can be solved with proper uh, boundary conditions. So, the to solve this equation we assume that uh, u basically the per water pressure to be uh, the product of two functions and the product of a function of a z and uh, uh, function t are uh, given as u is equal to a 1 cos b z plus a 2 sin b z a 3 and uh, to the exponential of uh, e to the power of minus b square c v t uh, is equal to a 4 cos b z plus a 5 sin b z uh, exponential minus b square c v t where a 4 is equal to a 1 a 3 and a 5 is equal to a 2 a 3. So, the constants in equation 3 can be evaluated from the boundary conditions which are as follows. So, by considering the proper boundary conditions can be solved. So, at time t is equal to 0 t is equal to 0 u is equal to E i that is u is equal to E i means that at time t is equal to 0 the moment the load actually has been applied instant instantaneously the initial excess pore water pressure at any depth is uh, you know is taken and at e at z uh, is equal to 0 that is uh, u is equal to 0 and at at z uh, at is equal to h t is equal to 2 h bottom of the clay layer the pore water pressure is again 0 the increase in pore water pressure is 0. So, note that h is the length of the longest drainage path and in this case uh, which is the two way drainage condition uh, top and bottom of the clay layer h is equal to the half of the total thickness of the clay layer. So, uh, water actually half of the portion of the water in the voids actually uh, flows upward and half of the portion of the water flows actually downward to the uh, bottom uh, drainage layer. So, here from the above a general solutions can be obtained where uh, u is equal to uh, n uh, integer is equal to 1 to infinity uh, summation a n sin n phi z by 2 h exponential uh, of minus n square pi square T v by 4 where T v is the time factor T v is the time factor okay. To satisfy the first boundary condition we must have the co coefficients a n such that u i is equal to n is equal to 1 to n is equal to infinity where a n is uh, sin n phi z by 2 h and this is uh, uh, legendered as 5 and with that equation 4 is a Fourier series and it is a n can be obtained by a n is equal to 1 by h 0 to 2 h that is the total thickness of the clay layer u i sin n pi z by 2 h into d z and combining equation 4 and uh, 6 we get u is equal to n to 1 to infinity 1 by h 0 to 2 h u i sin n pi n, n pi z by 2 h d z into sin n pi z by 2 h into exponential minus n square pi square T v by 4 where T v is the non dimensional time factor and which is equivalent to T c v by h square. So, h is nothing but here the drainage path in case of a uh, clay having a double drainage layer it is actually is uh, h by 2 uh, in case of uh, uh, a single layer the h is equal to h. So far no assumptions have been made regarding the variation of u a with the depth of the clay layer but there can be a number of variations can be assumed like assuming that if you are having a uniform variation if it is ua is actually constant with the depth and if you are having a double drainage layer then h t is equal to 2 h in this case when we look into this and this converts into <coughs> u is equal to n to 1 2 u naught by n pi cos 1 minus cos n phi by sin n pi z by 2 h exponential minus n square pi square T v by 4. So, here uh, this n is equal to 2 m plus 1 where m is an integer when we put into this and uh, this is for the one way drainage this is for one way drainage and this is for uh, you know two way drainage and uh, this is actually is assumed to be uniform variation. But there is also another case where upper layer is actually impervious bottom layer is pervious but that situation may not actually arise uh, in practical terms. If you are having a impervious soil surface or impervious uh, rock here then it is actually one dimensional uh, flow only happens here. So, further this actually gets simplified to this one where the Terzaghi's one dimensional consolidation theory where we actually finally we come narrow down to u is equal to m is equal to 0 to m is equal to infinity 2 u naught by m by sin m z capital M z where capital M is nothing but 2 m 1 into 2 m 1 within brackets into pi by 2 exponential minus m square T v. So, at a given time the degree of the consolidation at any depth can be determined. So, u z is degree of consolidation at any depth d at any depth z 
thickness within the thickness of the clay layer is nothing but the excess pore water pressure dissipated by the initial excess pore water pressure. So excess pore water pressure dissipated that is u i minus u u is actually the pore water pressure at to be dissipated. So u i minus u is uh, you know is the excess pore water pressure dissipated to the initial excess pore water pressure. Now this is nothing but one by one minus u by u i and which is nothing but delta sigma dash by u i is delta sigma dash by u naught. So by by using this u by knowing u z at any point of uh, any at any any uh, at any level we can actually construct the isochrone that is uh, for a for a uh, for a given time if you are having u z uh, then you know u i into one minus u z we can actually find out u is equal to u i into one minus u z. So in this uh, particular uh, lecture uh, we try to understand about the uh, definition of the consolidation and the consolidation phenomenon we understood that is a transient uh, uh, condition transient CPS condition and uh, wherein uh, we actually have discussed and introduced about the Terzaghi's one dimensional consolidation theory. Uh, then further we will actually apply uh, how this uh, Terzaghi's one dimensional consolidation theory can be applied to different boundary conditions and uh, also further we uh, extend to ramp loading and other conditions.